Hi, let's talk about using the jacks. This tool is primarily used to put a constriction in glass off the edge of the blowpipe or punty rod so that you can break off what you've made and keep it. So one of the best exercises or one of the most common exercises for this is called the snowman or the caterpillar exercise where you make a cylinder of glass put several constrictions in it, and then you control uh, which constriction it breaks off. So all we're really gonna need today is a, is a punty rod, or a bit iron, a solid steel rod, our jacks, and a pair of tweezers to go ahead and break the glass off when we're done. The other tool that we're gonna be using, which is a pretty major tool in glass working, is the Marver, M-A-R-V-E-R. This tool here is good for putting a cold skin of glass on the outside of a gather and shaping it. Because it's steel, it sucks heat from the glass. It does so fairly quickly. It's a pretty solid steel. This whole marble probably weighs, I don't know, three or 400 pounds or more. It's gonna conduct a lot of heat away from that glass. So we wanna be really quick when we're on the marble. The other thing that this exercise teaches you is timing and how to watch for the temperature of the glass. When we go to try to break this off, if the glass is too hot, it's too squishy and sticky inside, it won't break. If, however, I wait too long to break it off and the glass is too cold, it also won't break. So it's that time where the glass is warm and weak where I can use cold tools, put a crack line in it, and then break it off where I want to. So because of that, we, this exercise does not use any of the reheating furnaces, uh, the glory holes. It just uses the gather, marver, and these tools here at the bench. And this whole process should take, you know, a couple of minutes maybe. The idea behind this is even if you don't get those three constrictions in it, right off the bat that you have another chance to do it again in a couple of minutes. So that practice gets you better at gathering, gets you better at marbling, gets you better at sitting down and standing up and using those tools to get work done. So we'll go ahead and start by making a double dip gather, which is basically a small gather, let it get a little bit cold, and then gather on top of it. Now it's really important that for both gathers, I, this is cold, I just pulled it out of the bench so I can touch it. But I make sure that there is some glass off the end of the punty rod. If I gather and I hold the punty rod up at all, the glass will drip back onto the rod and I won't have any usable glass off the end. And I'll have to try to find a way to get the glass back off. So it's really critical that you watch when I come out of the furnace that I never hold it up to look at it. I'm always either level or slightly downhill to let the glass drain off the end. That's the only way, that's the best way to get usable glass. So let's get started. On most pipe warmers, there is a cold side and a hot side. Usually you load on the cold side and you pull from the hot side. And I wanna make sure that when I pull, there is some color to that punty rod. It should have a dull red cherry color. That means that it's, it's hot enough that it's not gonna suck all the heat out of that gather before I can do anything to it. Um, I'm gonna gather on my own, but normally you would have a partner opening and closing the door for you. Um, but I can go ahead and do this on my own. So it doesn't matter if I'm gathering a little or I'm gathering a lot. I try to make a nice, clean line where I gather. So you see how much I'm turning? Even though I'm turning slow, I'm turning a lot. And my gather when I come out should be nice and round, kind of like a Q-tip shape. Um, you notice that I'm not holding it up. I'm letting some glass drain off the punty rod. That's gonna make sure I've got some usable glass. Now I'm gonna gather and I'm gonna gather entirely over it. So what I just did just now was mentally count about 10 seconds before I gather over. Too long and this would be too cold. 
too hot, if I wait too, the, too uh, short of a period of time, when I gather over it, it'll all drip back off in the furnace. So I found that counting slowly to 10 is about right. So again, look how much I'm turning. Any excess glass, let it drip off back into the furnace. Come out, again, it should be nice and round. And it should look fairly even in temperature. There shouldn't be like one hot side and one cold side. It should look roughly even. So now, I'm gonna use this marber to make a shape, a cylinder. It's really important that I'm turning before I touch, like touching on a plane. And I'm turning really, really fast. Watch my hands. So two or three times back and forth on the marble should be enough. Now I've got a cylinder. And I quickly come over to the bench and sit down. The faster I do this, the faster I can get work done. I only put a delicate constriction in this. If I go too hard at first, I won't be able to get all the way. And then I can go back to the beginning and I can keep tightening them. So it's about starting it, moving back. And the really important thing here, if you look at my left hand, it's that consistent turning just from fingertips to palm, back and forth. You don't need to go all the way up and down the bench, just fingertip to palm. That way, my right hand can predict what my left hand is doing. And if you come around here to the front, what you can see is that the jack lines look different. They have a different shape. That's because on this one, I was angling the jacks, and on these, I'm going straight up and down. That's because that angled jack line is the best jack line for breaking stuff off. So now what I'm doing is I'm watching the temperature. It's moving very, very slightly. And right around the time it stops moving but isn't, but still has some yellow to it, that's about the time to break it off. So here's what I'm gonna do to break it off, to control it. These cold parts of the jacks are gonna go around the neckline that I want. Go all the way around. That's gonna put a constriction, uh, sorry, a crack line in there because it chilled it. Got my tweezers. I'm gonna go over to my annealer. I'm just gonna reach in all the way into the back and give it a couple of taps and it should break off. When I'm breaking it off, I'm trying to use the back of the tweezers like this. It doesn't really matter where you hit it. Um, if you hit it sideways like this, it doesn't do much because these are springy, kind of bouncy. And hitting them like this, as you can tell, severely damages these tools. But these are years of uh, intro students doing that. But if you use the back, that, that arch shape is very strong and you get a solid blow. But you can see that it broke off cleanly and straight where I wanted it to, but nowhere else. And then when I'm done, I will take my punchy rod, put it in the recycle bin, so that we can recycle that glass, and that's it. See you next time.